I just want to say thank you, even though Pastors Kent and Liz are not in the room right now. I am so thankful for their yes to the Lord. Yes. And it is an honor when they ask me to do this. I was like, yes. <laughs> so love the Lord with your yes. Okay. And this morning we're going to go, you're going to go on a journey with me. So I'll give you a title to the message. How to be a Mary in a Martha world. <laughs> and Miss Mary says, oh boy. And this Mary says, oh boy. A little bit of Martha going on. And, and guys, you're not left out, okay? I, I know those are girls' names, but it's, it's the attitude of it in your mind when I say um, be a Mary, not a Martha. Your mind could kind of go towards uh, be the disciple John, the one that Jesus called my beloved. Not Peter, who was like, wah, wah. Okay, so there you go. There's the male version of Mary and Martha, okay? Now, some of you may know the stories about Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and some of you may not. So those three people, they were Jesus' friends. He went to visit them. He called them friends, okay? He didn't call everybody friends, intentionally. He went to their house. He went to Martha's house. So I want you to think about that. Jesus showing up at your house. Before I start, I want to pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for having Mary and Martha in your scriptures so that we may learn from their experiences. I thank you, Father God, and I pray as I speak, they're your words, not my words. Your agenda, Lord, not my agenda. And I pray that everyone here, their eyes are open and their ears are tuned into your word and that they may embrace it and walk out their life, not only surviving, but thriving. In Jesus' name, thank you. So we're going to go to the word. If, if you guys would pull up the first scriptures that I gave you. It's in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 41. We're going to read those. Here we go. Now it happened as they went to a certain village, and that certain village was the town of Bethany. And the certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much, serving. As she approached him, she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered. He said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken from her. Amen. Mm. That story's deep. Now, as I share about these two different sisters who are totally different, I know things about yourself is going to stir up. And maybe some things with the person sitting next to you you're thinking about, stirring up. Nobody's allowed to elbow your neighbor, okay? All right? Because I believe we all have a little bit of Martha and a little bit of Mary and what comes out. Hmm. Hmm. It's all about timing. These two sisters, now remember, no condemnation, no guilt, and no poking your neighbor, Okay? Martha to me, this is how, this is how I pictured Martha in, in this particular story. She seemed strong and a good steward because she had her own home. She welcomed them into her home. It's in Martha's house, okay? And she wanted to serve. And think about this. I would say she was pretty fearless because she welcomed Jesus into her home, and she was strong Jesus didn't travel alone. There's no telling how many people actually came into Martha's house. OK? 
okay? Think about that. A lot of times you just think, oh, it was just Jesus who came in. Nope. It could have been 10, 20, 30. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I know it was more than just Jesus. It was people. And being fearless and strong isn't bad. And serving is not bad. Unless you have this moment where you become bossy to Jesus. She actually said, all right, I got to bring some stuff out. I, this is how I picture Martha. Martha's in there, and she sees all these, welcome, Jesus, everybody come in, sit down. And she runs right back to the kitchen, the dining room. She's getting everything ready, blah, blah, blah. She's over here doing this. Okay? And she's looking. And that sister Mary is nowhere to be found to help. Frustration. Mary had, or Martha had frustration. She was doing good things, but she got stuck on the serving. The good intentions, they became a distraction. But Mary, Mary, she goes. Jesus comes in, and this is, this is, how, I, is how I interpreted this, this story. He goes in, and he sits down, and he begins to talk to the people in the house. He's in the house. And typically, back in biblical times, the women weren't taught about God. Okay? They were back serving. It was the men. But Mary did not care. She went with the moment of Jesus was in the house. And she didn't care what men thought was normal. And she didn't care what her sister thought either. <laughs> Frustrated her sister. But we'll get there, okay? So she goes and she sits at Jesus' feet. And, and, and I picture him sitting there and everybody kind of hanging out and just listening to what he had to say. And this is how I picture Mary. I picture Mary that she's a friend of Jesus. She believed in Jesus. She's, she believed in God. God gave her a crown, and she was special, and she was unique and loved and, and, and adored. Martha was too. But Mary chose. The word said Mary chose the good thing. She goes, and she sits, and she hangs out. And she lays her crown down at Jesus' feet. And she leaves it there. And she listens to him. That was the good thing, the better thing. Okay? Now, we need to think, what are we choosing? Are we choosing the distractions to get everything right? You know, you men, I'm even thinking about you too. Okay, you come home and... And your family's inside, and they're getting ready. They're actually sitting down reading the Word of God and praying. And you come in, and, you're, and that's where you should have chose. But you go into the garage, and you start beating on things and fixing stuff. <laughs> things need fixed. Things need cleaned. Things need cooked. But wait. What should you choose first? Choose the good, the better thing. The one, the, in the part where, um, in the word where it says, Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled. Okay, I used to look at that as Jesus was rebuking her and like she was in trouble. Uh, I, I think because I have a tendency, those of you who know me, I'm a little bit more than Martha most of the time. So I'm like, okay, I got to do, 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 and serve, 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 and wait, the floor is dirty. I got to get that too. Don't let Jesus see that. Okay, yep, yep. Well, when he said, Martha, Martha, I took it as he was rebuking or yelling at her. Mm-mm, mm. I just found out that in the word of God, when, when your name is mentioned twice, that's a sign of compassion, it's not a stern rebuke. It is an honorable, loving covering of compassion. I picture Jesus going, Martha, Martha. You ever just had your he face held with two hands? Martha, Martha. When I got that revelation, I was just like, oh, 
oh, thank you, Jesus. Why I didn't get that before? Probably because I was too distracted with the, uh, 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 you know. Martha, Martha. And it says, you know, that, that Mary has chosen the good part, and it will not be taken from her ever. That's a promise. When we sit at the feet of Jesus, those moments, that's from the Lord. Those are the moments that we need to soak in. And that's where it comes to the second title of this message, How to Be a Mary in a Martha World, Pause in His Presence. Breathe that in. He's in the house, and we need to pause in the moment, in his presence. All of that will still be there. It doesn't matter. Pause in his presence. Sit at his feet. Lay your crowns down at his feet. Choose the good thing. And see, Jesus could have said, Martha, Martha, you... You're troubled and you're distracted and blah, 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 and you chose the wrong thing. No, he didn't say that, okay? He said, Martha, Martha, and then he talked about Mary choosing the good or the better thing. It's not that um, serving is bad or wrong or sitting at Jesus' feet is too much. It's just the better choice. So to me, that was a very... It was a very cool way to honor and cover Martha. She had a little mishap. She got a little bossy. She even bossed Jesus. But he loved her so much. Martha, Martha, calm down. That's what the Lord is saying to us. And all the things that we have to do, just pause in his presence first and watch how those things are taken care of better Things are fixed better. Things last longer. Things are just better if we will pause in his presence first and connect. And when you sit at Jesus' feet, think about that. You're sitting there at Jesus' feet, and you're looking up at him. I picture Mary walking up and sitting down, and, 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 you know, she wasn't really wearing a physical crown. This is an example. And she lays it, and she's down like this. But then she looks up at Jesus, and she's eye to eye, sitting at his feet, soaking in what he is giving out. And when we do that, that place, that place is where that you can, you will receive the plans and purposes he has for you. When you pause in his presence, Healing happens, restoration happens, salvation happens, promotions happen, protection happens. The whole package deal, if you will pause in his presence first and just look into the Lord's eyes. Breathe it in, and then he sends you out. That's where the preparation is. That's where the peace of God is poured out onto your lives. When you're sitting at his feet first, pause in his presence first. A lot of us, <laughs> oh, some, think about this. Which are you? No elbow on each other. No condemnation. Team Martha attitude was busy in this story. Busy? I heard an acronym one time, what busy stood for. Busy, B-U-S-Y. Being under Satan's yoke. Don't be busy, okay? Don't be busy. We don't want to be under Satan's joke. Team Mary attitude chose wisely. She paused in his presence. I have that desire to, to pause in his presence all the time, but man, ah, Martha's screaming in my head often to go do. Go do, you gotta do, you gotta do. You said you need this, your list, this, this. Quiet that, that attitude. Pause in his presence. <laughs> Here's a little funny story. I picture this as Mary and Martha in, um, in modern times, and they're going to have family over for a movie night, okay? Oh, everybody's hanging out watching a movie, and here's Martha. She's got to, like, up, down. Okay, okay, 
Come on, sit down and watch this movie. Wait, I gotta get the popcorn. Do 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 do. Get the popcorn. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, I forgot your drink. Let me get your drink. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we're watching the movie. Okay. Oh, wait. You need a blanket. Hey, we get the blanket. And they're like, and Mar and Mary, she's just all kicked back in that recliner, enjoying the show, soaking in the moment. Okay. Those things that Martha's doing, they're good. I like popcorn. I like drinks. I like blankets when I watch a movie. They're good, but oh, pause. Pause in his presence. I know some of you are flashbacking to yourself doing some of those things. I can't be the only one that's behaved like that. No finger pointing. No elbowing. I saw some. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> so the... There's something I want you... Oh, no, I'm going to save that part for later. Okay. Look, this, this is my notes. No, not really. Not all of them. <laughs> just, just a few pages. That's the Martha side. You know. <laughs> there's, there's another story. I'm grateful that, you know, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, okay, they're brothers, sisters. Did I say that part before? I'm not sure if I did or not, but yes. So the other part, the other story I want to share with you is... Um, and for time's sake, I'm going to challenge you to go and read this story and soak it in. Soak in the Word of God. This is in John chapter 11. And this is where, this is the story of where Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus, he got sick. Okay? He got sick and Jesus was not in town. They sent people after, Mary and Martha sent people after Jesus to come back to town. Well, he waited a couple days. Everybody know what happened? Lazarus died. And these were Jesus' friends. Like, hmm, okay. The sisters, they were upset, of course. That's her brother. He died. Jesus would have been here. He wouldn't have died. Okay, that's, that's, that was their attitude. So Jesus is finally coming to back to town to where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are. And Martha hears about it. And before Jesus even gets to all the way to her house, she runs to Jesus. Okay? She ran out to the Lord and went to him and said, my brother, he's, he's dead. And Jesus knew. He's just sleeping. You know, he knew. He knew what was going to happen. But Martha chose she chose at that moment when the Lord was coming to town to run out to him and go meet him. She didn't hesitate. Okay? She, she was strong. She was fearless. She ran out to Jesus. And she had full faith. You know, because it says there, um, it's, it said that she, I'm paraphrasing. It said that she said, whatever you ask of God, he will do. She had that much faith in, in who Jesus is, okay? Mary, it was opposite. Mary stayed at home and she cried. Well, obviously, that's normal, our human side. We're going to weep when we lose a brother, a family member, a friend. That's normal, okay? That's, that's, that's normal. But she stayed home and she wept and she cried. Well, Martha ran to Jesus. And then she came back and she told Mary... Jesus wants you. Come on. Come on. I love that it flipped. Martha was choosing the good thing. She was running to the Lord with her situation. She was being honest that she was hurt and she was frustrated that he wasn't there and et cetera. But, but she was showing the faith and she was quick about it. Come on, Mary. And they bring Mary to Jesus. And Mary, once again, this is the second time we hear Mary. She falls to Jesus' feet. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But in this story, I, I feel like we were, we were shown this, how Martha was quick and full of faith to run to the Lord. That that's what we should do first. That was the good and the better thing. Was it bad Mary was staying at home crying? No. No, but the good, better thing is get up and go straight to the Lord. Be honest and full of faith to the Lord. Now, and as Mary fell at Jesus' feet, 
He showed compassion. He saw her crying. And that's where we see the shortest scripture in the Bible. Jesus wept. He loved them, and he wept and showed compassion. He was human, too. He had all the emotions we did, and his dear friend was dead. And it just shows that the, the compassion is it, a good thing. He wept with the sisters. And then we know the rest of the story. Yeah, he goes to Lazarus and raises, raises him from the dead. Yes! Yes! Oh, can you imagine that? Wow. Someday I'm going to see that happen. I'm going to see that happen. I am. I will. Ha. Huh. Okay, all right, I get excited. So this time, Team Martha attitude was, was the good, better thing. Quick to run to Jesus, full of honesty and faith. Mary was a little bit slow, but she still went, okay? Okay, let's go one more. We're going to go to one more spot in the Word about these two ladies. This is in John 12, 1 through 8. I think I've got them to pull those up. If you guys would, okay. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead, whoo, there they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those that sat at the table. Can you imagine somebody being dead and then you eat dinner with them? How fun. How fun. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spinkered, oint, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of that oil. But one of the disciples, Judas, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Then he said, not that, not that he cared about the poor, because, you know, because he was a thief and he had the money box and he used to, you know, take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. What? How beautiful. I don't know if Mary actually realized that Jesus was physically going to die, but maybe she did. I think the Lord prompted her to go to Jesus' feet lay down all of her stuff and her crowns and pour the oil on him and then use her own hair to wipe his feet. What a beautiful picture to pause in his presence and serve him. So not only here, if you noticed further back in the scripture, it's, it even said in there, this time it says Martha served, but there was no complaining or tattling this time to Jesus. I think that Martha embraced her position. And some of us are called to be more of the, the, the front servers. You know, we, ha we have that in us, and that's a good thing, but it has to be balanced. And this time I believe Martha was balanced because it said she served. And Jesus didn't go, Martha, Martha. It just says Martha served. She embraced what she was supposed to be doing at the moment in the proper order. Then it shows where Mary paused in his presence at his feet. She began to pour the oil out. She used her hair to wipe. She was actually anointing him for his burial. You know, which, that's what it said. She spent time with him. This was the third time Mary was, it talks about when Mary's at his feet. And she was accused of wasting. Don't care what men think of you when you are pausing in Jesus' presence, okay? And I love, once again, before Jesus honored and covered Martha, he honored and covered Mary and said, leave her alone. She was choosing the good thing. And I believe that these ladies, they've opened up and embraced their unique positions. They're both secure in that last story. Martha was serving Mary was sitting and worshiping and serving, if you noticed. Pouring of the oil, that was ministering to Jesus, using her hair to wipe his feet. She was worshiping and serving at the time. Beautiful picture of balance. May we all have that kind of balance in our day-to-day -day lives, in our journeys with the Lord. It's my heart's cry. 
Now, I also think there's something that Jesus, the, the reason they put you know, these ladies in the word for us to learn from, I think there's something that we need to wrap our minds around. I don't know if any of you have done this. I, I'm probably not the only one. But a lot of times when we hear these stories about Mary and Martha, it's, it's Mary or Martha. Mary or Martha. Take out the or. It never says Mary or Martha. It says Mary and Martha. Wrap your mind around that. Okay, guys, John, <laughs> resting on Jesus, Peter, yeah, okay, it's and, okay. So it shows, we just take the word or out, both. There's a balance, okay. Jesus, as he was walking around and ministering to everyone, how many times is, I don't know how many times, you can look it up, I don't know. He stopped, he paused, he went away and worshiped the Father and prayed to the Father. I know it says it more than once in there, because somewhere it says he did it often. Often means a lot, in my mind. So if he did it, mm, pretty sure it's important. So here's another scripture, Matthew 6, 33. It's a great example. Here we go. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. All means all. I love when Pastor Liz says that. All means all. Okay? But seek first, first the kingdom of God. Pause in his presence. Now. It was in Luke 5, 16. Pull that one up. That was the one that I was. Uh, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Often withdrew. Jesus is our example on how we should live. Pull away often and pause. As we, as we get close, as, as we're going to close, as we're going to close, I want to ask you some questions. I just want you to think about these. Remember, no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. The Lord loves you just as you are. Amen. First question, what are some distractions that's pulled us away? And they're not necessarily sins. Okay. What are some, some distractions that pulled us away from pausing in his presence first? Hmm. Number two, what can be the dangers of those distractions? Mm. Number three, is your life marked more with distractions or devotion? Distractions or devotion? Jesus said what Mary has chosen and learned will not be taken from her. As we devote and pause in his presence, that will never be taken away from us. We can lose jobs. But the pause in his presence and what that relationship with Jesus and honoring and worshiping him will never be taken from you. Never, never, never. Number four, have you found it easier to talk? This is where it gets wrong real because I'm guilty of this. It's happened before. Have you ever found it easier to talk about God as if he's not in the room? Instead of actually pausing and talking to him. Or when you're sharing about God to people. Praise God you're sharing about the Lord to other people. But are you talking like he's not in the room? Oh, people, he's right here. He wants us to pause in his presence and feel his love. And as we feel it, 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 it's overflowing and comes out of us. The other day, as we, th as we think on this, I heard the Lord say to me the other day, have a merry heart. 
pause with me. I have you in the palm of my hand. Tune your ear to my voice. Healing, restoration, purpose, plans, protection, promotion, victory are with him. Like I said before, that was from the Lord. He also said, the best is in his rest. Rest with him first. No matter if it's one minute or five hours, he sees you. And if you are pausing in his presence first, it's bam, that's what it is. That's where it's at. That's the moment. I had a friend, I had a friend say to me, a quote at the life group the other night. She said, you're doing should be from the overflow of your being. We are human beings, not human doings. Human beings with the Lord. And your doing will overflow and then it will be a beautiful doing. It won't just be works that is burned up and bleh. Okay? Your doing should be from the overflow of your being. We're going to take a moment here and if the altar team will go ahead and just come up and kind of hang out on the sides, the prayer team, altar team. I would love if y'all would join me, if y'all would just stand up for a moment.